So in this video, we're going to talk about sulfur dioxide, SO2. And you're going to wonder, and we're going to talk about, is this molecule polar or not? Well, the first thing I like to do is determine my lowest structure. So I know that I have one sulfur atom and I have two oxygen atoms. So the total number of electrons we have to place would be, we know that sulfur has, just from the periodic table, sulfur has uh, six valence electrons, and we know that oxygen has six valence electrons. So the total number of electrons we have to place is two times six because we have two oxygen atoms, so that would be 12 electrons plus six, so that would be 18, um, 18 total electrons that we have to place. So again, usually, as you, um, as you, um, like you guys have seen, is that the the atom furthest to the molecular uh, furthest left in the molecular formula is usually your central atom. Mm -hmm. Now, at this point, I could actually draw uh, uh, two oxygen atoms surrounding my sulfur atom. Right? Now, I know at this point, sulfur is one of those uh, molecules. Um, I'm sorry, atom that can have an expanded octet, so we shouldn't be surprised. If sulfur has more than six valence, I'm sorry, eight valence electrons around around in its shell, right? So that is possible with sulfur. Oxygen, on the other hand, uh, kind of follows the typical rule that we know that um, eight electrons must be in its shell, All right? So I could start off with single bonds at each side, and so this far, because one single bond represents two valence electrons, we thus place four valence electrons uh, thus far. I could also maybe form a double bond between two. And what this does is that it gives me eight electrons around the sulfur, but it also gives me four valence electrons around the oxygen each. Now, because we know that sulfur can have an expanded octet, we're going to leave sulfur for a minute and we're going to move on to the oxygens. But simply because we know that oxygens, they must satisfy the octet rule, right? So because I have already have four valence electrons around the oxygen, I could put an additional two pairs of lone pairs on the oxygen. I could possibly do the same thing on the other side so at this point two four six eight the oxygen's octet is satisfied and the left oxygen and the right oxygen octet is satisfied so how many valence electrons we've thus used thus far out of the 18 that we have to place well we have two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen so it's interesting we have 16 but we need 18 right now at this point oxygen's octet is satisfied however the sulfur octet is not Oh, well, I'm sorry, not, not, it's, it's, the oxygen octet is satisfied, so the only other place we have to put the, the remaining two electrons is on the sulfur, and we can do that in the pair of lone pairs. Now, this is very interesting. So, let us do our dipole a moment, right? We've gotten lower structure correct at this point, so let us do our dipole moments. Well, we could see that we should know by now that oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur. Right, so we could draw our dipole moment on this side, and we can also do the same for here. Right, the oxygen will be hogging electrons simply because it's more electronegative than sulfur. It's one step above the periodic table. Now, drawing the molecule this way is kind of misleading because you would think that this molecule is actually nonpolar, right? Because you've seen that the dipoles at this point is equal to zero, but is that, but that's actually factually incorrect this molecule is actually polar, and the reason why is these pairs of lone pairs. What the pairs of lone pairs actually do is it actually brings the bond angles closer to each other, so they bend, so they kind of bend them down, and this is actually the molecular geometry of the molecule. So the pairs of lone pairs is very important. Anytime, this is kind of a, it's kind of a general thought process that you should think. Anytime you see a pair, whether it's one pair or two pairs of lone pairs, or even um, a free radical, which is just a single pair of electron on a central atom, it's going to affect the geometry, right? So the bond angles are going to be a little bit more smaller, or they're going to be bent down essentially a little bit more closer to each other. And so if we draw it in the correct way, we can see that our dipole moments, if we redraw our dipole moments, and let me put back in my electrons, Right, you could actually see that the net dipole moments are not tail to tail, so they do not cancel out, and so we know that this molecule is actually polar. And if we actually were to draw the net dipole moment from these arrows, from the arrows on both sides of the oxygen, then the net dipole moment will actually be going in this uh, direction. So you do have a net dipole moment, and so the net dipole moment here will be going down from the addition of the dipole moments in the red arrow. 
And so because of that, sulfur dioxide is actually a polar molecule, but it is because of the pairs of lone pairs. Right? So drawing the molecule in the electron geometry at times can be misleading. Right? So hence why this molecule is polar.